to relish every second of this appointment. I'd like to call the Cape Elizabeth School Board to order for our June meeting. Um, our first order of business, well, it's for me to say a few words because this is my last uh, meeting. In fact, it's my last few minutes as the chairman of your school board this year. And I, I would like to tell you that it has been an honor for me to serve the school board as chairman this past year. Uh, this is a wonderful system in, in which to serve. And after completing my first term on the school board and, and in preparation for uh, the beginning of a second term this evening, um, I, I'm convinced more than ever what a fine school system that we do have. I, I know I really shouldn't compare school systems, but I've been closely involved in school systems in four other states and in, in two foreign countries, and truly none of them compare in any way to the quality of the, educa the educational system that we have here in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, we're a small town of just around 8,000 people, but it's special. And I ask myself, what's so special about it? And I can think of three things. The first, and, I, and for me always the foremost reason, is the kids. The students in Cape Elizabeth appreciate a good education. Expectations are high at home. Uh, there just must be a contagious desire in this town instilled in these students to be the best that they can be, to try hard, to take advantage of all the educational opportunities that are offered to them. And if, you're, if you watch school board meetings, I think you'll know that every month, every month, this meeting always includes times that students are recognized for their abilities and their efforts. Such things as national English awards, sports state championships, national merit scholars, special Olympic contest winners, completions of fine projects. If you voted today, I think you saw a wonderful example of fine projects if you, if you uh, noticed the uh, third grade projects that they have done of the town of Cape Elizabeth. It was a wonderful display of their efforts. A second reason I think our school system is special is because we have capable, caring teachers, staff, and administrators. Their devotion and commitment to give their best efforts on behalf of our children is appreciated and certainly the foundation for our school successes. Another strength of our system, I think, is the su support that's given to the schools by our townspeople. Not just parents of school-aged children, but a strong commitment by the whole town to maintain excellent schools has always been made through the years by the citizens of this town. I thank them for that and repeat that our success as a school system is due to their support at sporting events, cheering us on, lending a hand at project graduation, being there for the school plays and through their tax dollars. It's been a rewarding year for me. As a school board, we've repaired the facilities, fixed the leaking roofs, provided support for a stronger curriculum, and worked hard at providing equal opportunities for all students in this system, to name a few. It's been a difficult year, especially these most recent months of working on the budget when money was limited, 
and difficult choices of school priorities had to be made. But it's now a real pleasure for me to turn this chairmanship over to my highly respected fellow board member, Peter Leslie. Peter, it's yours. Thank you, Loretta. I'm pleased that my uh, first action as chairman of the Cape Elizabeth School Board is to thank Loretta Pond for all that she has done for the Cape Elizabeth School System during the last year as our leader and chairman. And it has been a very tough year to be the chairman. And I know Loretta has dedicated many, many hours to meeting with all members of the Cape Elizabeth community. She's attended innumerable events and she has tirelessly answered letters and telephone calls, all of them. I would estimate that if she were a lawyer or a consultant or an accountant, her billable hours would probably be the equivalent of a year's full work. But I can think of no better compliment than uh, to pay Loretta is to state publicly that I pleaded with her to continue as our leader and chairman for another year and I had the support of my colleagues in this, to no avail. She wanted to spend a bit more time with her family, and I can understand that. But I do take great comfort from the fact that Loretta is still a member of the school board and will continue to dedicate to our children and to our board her time, her wisdom, and her compassion. Loretta, on behalf of the entire Cape Elizabeth School Committee community, if I can find it down here, I would like to give you this plaque, a commemorative plaque, as a very small token of our appreciation. I think it's in here somewhere. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Appreciate that. I also want to say a few words, as I assume the chairmanship. I want to thank the eight teachers and teachers' aides who, by no fault of their own, saw their jobs eliminated. I can think of no more disappointing and frustrating career event than to lose one's job in this manner, a job one has done well and which has contributed to the education of the children in this town. And I know that there's nothing that I can say that will assuage that pain but I want to publicly say thank you to all of these people and to wish them well in the future. Becoming chairman of the school board is, as Loretta said, uh, customarily an honor and a privilege, but the events of the recent months uh, and the prospect of even harder times to come gave me some pause to think before taking on this task. I have agreed to accept this challenge because I'm an optimist. And I believe there is a silver lining to all that we have experienced in recent weeks. I think that we can work together as a community by making our particular form of self-government work and at the same time respect our different views and votes. And I want to thank especially those members of the town council and the public who spoke last night and recognized the hard and even agonizing work that went into the decisions that this board made about educational priorities in this town, even though many of them did not agree with the outcome. And I want to thank those that spoke about the respective roles of the town council and the school board and the need for mutual respect among our members. And finally, I want to thank those who spoke so eloquently about our Jeffersonian heritage of representative government and commitment to public education. <clears throat> These recent events have been an important reminder about our government, and I think we all need to be reminded from time to time about the constant work and effort self-government requires. Next year will be a hard one, and we welcome the participation from day one of all the citizens in this process. We have many talented people in this community who can add immeasurably to the budget process if they so choose. And I especially want to encourage the students 
to participate in the process. I remember during the Vietnam War, the case about a certain student protest demonstration went to the Supreme Court, and Justice Abe Fortas said, children do not check their constitutional rights at the schoolhouse gate. And I think it's important that we remember that and encourage our students to be part of the process next year. So I say to you, get involved early. Find out the facts. Act constructively to help shape our decisions. So let's begin this work now, together. Thank you. Now, I wonder if any of the rest of you would like to uh, say anything. Uh, Charlie, did I see your hand go up? I want to thank Loretta for being a gracious lady who chaired the board respectfully and efficiently during a very difficult year. <coughs> I personally want to thank her for being a, so supportive, a good resource, and always a good listener during my first year on the school board. The year for me has been an educational experience, pardon the pun, in the public edu education process. As lay people, as are most of us, are on this board, we have tried through public meetings, monthly workshops on specific issues, contract negotiations, and participating in the interview process for new staff to become informed and accountable board members. I feel we represent some cross-section of the community with differences of opinions on issues and educational philosophies. But I think we all support the same basic concept of a challenging learning process in reading, writing, math, science, and social studies. We all support an integrated curriculum through all three levels of the school system. Curriculum which addresses the specific needs of effectively educating each level with strong, challenging courses. The $30,000 of cuts I alluded to during the last school board meeting in May came from unassigned budget administrator raises and benefits, some new and replacement equipment purchases, and projected increases in some instructional accounts. But I have to remind you, the remainder of the 21,000 would have had to come from a curriculum program cut. The educational philosophical differences by members of this board regarding cuts this year revolved around the number of students impacted by a program and the quality or value of the, of the learning experiences of that program. As the funding becomes scarce and the costs increase to maintain and hire good teachers and staff, we will have to examine and re-examine all programs and continually watchdog all expenditures. What I hope we have learned from this past year is that we will need to start the budget process, as our chairman has alluded, in <coughs> September and solicit input early from the town council, the community, parents, students, teaching staff, and school administrators to help us make equitable and informed budgetary decisions of what will be another difficult fiscal year in 91-92. <coughs> in a democratic society, we elect public officials to govern and administer by majority rule. When the final vote is taken, the consensus should be supported by the whole board in order to carry on an effective, orderly process of administering and governing. Change comes in early participation in the process and ultimately at the ballot box. So let's move on, please. Thank you, Charlie. It's not required to uh, speak. It's not? Oh, good. No, no. No, it's, uh, you don't have to. No, I want to thank Loretta for uh, doing an excellent job this year. Uh, my second year on the, on the uh, school board, and uh, I've learned a lot at Loretta's uh, feet, so to speak, and uh, her experience has helped us all, I think, understand this process a little bit better with her perspective. Um, I just had a couple of things I wrote down today as I was sitting in the office, and it was long before I got home and I saw this in uh, the dinner table tonight. And I'm concerned about a couple of things. First of all, this was a difficult year. Uh, I think the people that called, and I must say I didn't get a lot of phone calls from people who were concerned about some of the cuts and where they were made. I had, if not as many, more who supported the cuts in the areas um, called. Uh, what concerned me was that if, if this was the reaction that we had this year, uh, I'm not sure I want to be around here next year at this time when things get even tougher. 
because I believe it is going to get tougher next year. Um, the, the other thing that we, I mentioned one night uh, not too long ago is that, or somebody said last night, I guess it was, that the, it didn't seem to make much difference about what the parents had to say. And I must say that I can't disagree more. When we went into the budget process, there were certain percentages thrown around that were nowhere near the 9.9 percent .9 budget increase that we finally got through the town council, or that the town council finally approved and presented to the town. And I think that the increase that was there at 9.9 percent .9 may have been less than we wanted and may have been less than people in the community may have wanted, but it was substantially more than what was originally talked about in the first budget workshop that we had. So I don't want anybody to feel that their input and the parental support and the support of the students and the faculty was ignored by anybody, especially the town council, because they heard you loud and clear and you opened their eyes to the realities of the situation that's going on here in the Cape. The other thing I'd like to talk about is the fact that I do appreciate the efforts of the town council. There has been some rhetoric, and I suppose I'm as guilty as anybody of, at budget hearings and budget meetings of throwing some rhetoric around every once in a while to make a point. But I think what's important is in the end, we all agreed that the decision on where the cuts were going to be were ours, and that's what we are elected to do. And they provided us with the money that they felt the town could afford, and I think they did their job in an admirable and professional way. I'd like to think that we did as well. I can only say that the five people that sit up here in front of you tonight acted in the fairest possible way and did not rush to judgment as been accused by some people in the last moments of the budget process. I can tell you there were many sleepless nights that I had in thinking about where the money was going to come from to, in order for us to, to pass the budget that we have now. The process of government isn't always fair. The one thing that I think we're going to have to face in Cape Elizabeth over the next several years is that we may not get everything that we want. I think Penny, for, Penny Carson's comments last night were absolutely appropriate. Uh, we live in an age of immediate, uh, uh, immediate gratification. And in this day and age, we're going to have to learn to live with perhaps less than we would like to live with in order to be able to survive in the years ahead. I think Penny's comments were very, very worthwhile. If there's one area where I'm really disappointed and concerned is the recent wave of false comments, malicious statements that have been thrown around the town. I don't think they're good. I don't think they're fair. I don't think they're accurate. I'm very concerned about this. Because what we have are people in this school, school board members, town officials, superintendent, his support staff, the administration at the high school, middle school, Pond Cove level, everybody who works for the school system, whose only concern are the children of this town. I believe that this kind of rhetoric needs to stop now, and I mean now. These professionals have dedicated everything they have to children in education. A group of frustrated people or people who didn't like the outcome of what happened can be upset, and I understand that. But there comes a point, as Charlie just said, when we all have to come together and realize that the decisions were made were tough ones, they aren't necessarily fair, but they were ones that were made and we're going to have to live with them. There are no easy answers to the problems that we had with the budget this year. There are no slush funds, there's no secret accounts, there's no hidden thousands away for somebody to find. There's none of that. And I want to tell you all that we have public sessions all year long. And when the budget process starts next year, I invite all of you to attend all the meetings that we have to find out for yourself where your tax dollars go and how they're spent. Because the outcome is really dependent upon your involvement. 1989 was a tough year. 1991 is probably going to be tougher. But I think with the support of the faculty, the administration, parents, community leaders, town council members, and of course all of you people here and at home can continue to work together, and I think we will all be able to provide the children with the best possible education that we can give them. Thank you. Jan? Thank you. I also would like to thank Loretta. She and I came on to the board at the same time, and not only has she been a valuable school board member, but, but she's also a good friend, and I really value that a lot. Um, I'm very proud to be on the school board with, with the members that we have. Um, 
and I respect all of them very much. I, have, I also would really like to thank everybody on the Administrative Council, um, all the teachers, all the support people. I, I will forget somebody if I start getting too detailed, but everybody that has worked so hard for the children to help make this a successful year. I think that that's really terrific, and I've been very impressed by how hard everybody works, and, and it shows. It really shows. Um, the last thing I want to say is how proud I am of the curriculum work that's happened since I've come on the board. That was the focus from the people that I heard from when I was running and since I've been on the board. Um, let's upgrade math and science and social studies and language arts um, and have the integrated K through 12 curriculum. And I'm seeing that happen. And I'm really pleased and I think we're headed in, in the right direction and I see things only getting, that are already really fine, only getting better. So thank you to everybody. Thank you, Jan. Three hours ago, I had absolutely no idea what I was going to say uh, this evening, and I had uh, no idea when I sat down here this evening that uh, everybody was going to say something. And I, so I apologize to those people uh, to whom I said that uh, we would have probably a half an hour business meeting and then have plenty of time for other, um, other subjects if there were any. I think that we do have a half an hour or so ahead of us on uh, fairly routine business, and I'd like to get that out of the way uh, first. Uh, but I would like to know how many people intend to speak uh, after the business uh, part of the meeting is over. Mr. Ferguson? Okay, we'll, we'll uh, get the business uh, part of the meeting done, and then we'll hear from Mr. Ferguson. Uh, Dr. Pelletier, do you have adjustments to the agenda? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make adjustments in the following areas. A number, under the superintendent's report, I'd like to add a C uh, on the a quick uh, report on the school calendar. I'd like to add a leave of absence to 11A and uh, three additional teachers for nomination. Uh, those are the changes I would hope to make. Okay, that's uh, fine. Let's move on to the uh, minutes, and Charlie, uh, I believe you have a correction. Yes, I do. Under item 10, um, we adjourn the meeting after coming out of the executive session. It states Loretta Kwan moved to adjourn the meeting. Loretta Kwan seconded the vote. I believe it was Charlie Greer that seconded the vote. Thank you. Good thing we got rid of her. <laughs> The uh, business manager's report, D. Thank you, Peter. Uh, this is not a quarterly, a scheduled quarterly report. However, should you have any questions on the revenue portion on page uh, 67, I will try to answer them. Basically, we received 92% uh, of our revenues here to date with one month to go. Any questions on the uh, business manager's report? The following page is a summary of the expenditures for year to date. As of the end of May, we have expended 6.8 or 6.9 million dollars or 85 percent of our budget. With keeping in mind that uh, June we do have three teacher payrolls that account for roughly two percent per payroll of the budget. So you'll see that number growing this coming month, plus an accrual of approximately like $75,000 for summer pay for teachers. Uh, the state has been informed that we are interested in buying a bus and we have sent in the necessary paperwork. Uh, we have received uh, the okay. So the money will be, the ED269 will be adjusted to reflect the $46,000 increase in state revenues. The following page outlines a uh, federal and state programs for the year. We have received $149,000 and have expended $112,000 with a surplus or a balance of $36,000. Some of these money will be carried over into next year's budget or appropriate categories. 
Oh, let me ask a question about that. Sure. Under local entitlement for 1989-90, I see that we have a balance of $23,998. Yeah. Why, why is there so much left? Uh, this will be a lot. It's Wayne here. Wayne's not here. Uh, okay. Uh, what happened, Loretta? I think if you go to the line above that, in, in 88, 89, we did carry forward $30,708 okay. of that same program and therefore expended that money first. All there right. will be some money less left in this account. However, uh, June is a month where they do pay a lot of the, this is mostly uh, related to special ed type of accounts, and some monies will be going out. And what about, are we going to get that Chapter 1 money? Chapter 1. I see we have no revenues. Chapter 2. Excuse me, Chapter, chapter two. 2. to be distributed to us as a receivable for year end received in July. It will be treated as an accounts receivable from the state with the check coming through in July of this summer. Okay. And then my other question, I, I, I'm sorry Wayne's yeah. not here, but, but that technical education, yeah. is that the same? This Tech Ed for Maine, this is uh, a grant received by the, uh, the high school department for uh, Gary, Illinois, and it is a, like a statewide type grant. We do the accounting for it, period. It, it uh, involves certain, I guess, the directors or certain uh, department heads in the IA department throughout the state that meet and do various things as far as planning in that. So is he going to be using that money in the summer? Uh, what happened last year, the money that was not used was returned to the state come June 30th, and then they got the money back for the year after. We had to cut a check to the state. They reimbursed the program the year after. So if we don't spend the money this year, we have to reimburse it to the state. Yeah, but it's, it's really not Kate Elizabeth's money to spend. It's this association uh, of IA teachers at the high school level that meet and, and do some consultation or whatever it is to uh, Gary, Illinois. Uh, question again on Chapter 2, sure. yeah. Have we spent that money? Yeah. Okay. We bought uh, computers. We received it, we spent it. Computers were purchased with authorization from the state. The way it is, the federal money coming in in July will not be received in time. However, we will treat it as an accounts receivable from the state okay. through the feds. The following report is on food services. Uh, through the month of May, we did realize a, a profit of $3,700. To date, we have a loss of $30,000. Uh, I think going back to February, we did project like a $25,000 loss in the program. It could be a reality. Hopefully, we'll make a little more than $5,000 in June, but we'll see in, in another week when the school lunch program closes. What, what did we make last year in June? Do we have a sense I haven't, of... Uh, I haven't compared. I could get back to you on that. Um, uh, we just paid a warrant today of $12,000. The only thing left really to pay in school lunch will be milk and labor costs, <coughs> labor and fringes. Uh, our buying is like nil right now, but we need to buy the milk and juice to finish the week. And that's it. Are our, subs are our subsidies over with for the year? No. Subsidies... Uh, See, we closed uh, that Friday, leaving four days of revenue to come in from May into June, which accounted for like eight thousand dollars. We did receive, or we did receive last week, a check from the state in the amount of twenty-nine hundred dollars in additional subsidies for school lunch. What they do in the month of June is any money that they feel will be left over, they just distribute among all schools for the year. That is not realized in this number. Because I had noticed in May that yeah. seems to be the lowest subsidy we've had all year. So I was wondering so if that So next month you'll see the $2,900 plus you'll see whatever uh, this is. What received in May is actually April, uh, April subsidy. We're always a month in arrears. Mm -hmm. So with numbers like that, we should be able to narrow that another $5,000. Oh, yes. Hopefully a little more. I will update you, you know, prior to, to the school year. Uh, sure, go ahead. When will uh, the director start ordering for next year? When will? They met, they met last Thursday, I believe, and started the process of, uh, of, the, of the, uh, the bid process through the uh, association of school lunch uh, in Cumberland and York County. 
the the mill bids came through. They're analyzing those. We've we're, they're in the process of you know I guess talking to the the lowest vendors and possibly awarding the bid. The food bid I believe doesn't go out or or receive much before August or the middle of August for September. So she is planning to implement some of those suggestions that you made. From that sure, I was going to bring that up. We did have a workshop in May, and a lot of these suggestions will be implemented. Uh, last but not least is the the uh, community services financial statement. Uh, to date, they had collected uh, have collected three hundred ninety eight thousand dollars and expended three hundred nineteen. They project the year end of four hundred nine thousand in revenues with expenditures of three hundred seventy four, or twenty seven twenty eight thousand dollar balance. And where does that that money being carried over? We budgeted 20, what's the carryover, so 25? 25 plus. 25 plus into next year's budget. The rest will remain in the town's uh, general fund. That's what made your increase zero for next yeah. year, right? Yeah. The tax rate. Well, I'm sorry, the enrollments uh, report. The enrollments are down from 805, 809 last month to 805 for this month with the reduction being, uh, I'm sorry, that's the uh, elementary. That's elementary. Lost four kids at the elementary. We're down one at the uh, middle school and we're down one at the high school. But do you know why we lost uh, four kids at the elementary, Barbara, do you know? <laughs> Thank you. Where are we at now for incoming kindergarten? Has that remained about the same or? The projections that I that I attempt to make are, are net increase. We always have some movement toward the end of the year. A lot of uh, out-of-state relocations, actually. Um, I, I brought with me a list that doesn't reflect four or five yet, because this is from Marianne, of 22 K through three new registrations that we're processing now. And there's um, another whole box full of sort of, we'll get back to in a few weeks, um, potentials. So we're, we're about as projected, I'm afraid. Um, even a little high in first. What, what about, about the other excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> the How other. Our well, to tell you the truth, Charlie, as I, as I asked for this, as I was speeding out of the office today, I'm, I can't tell you precise numbers. I just know that the incoming numbers are as high, if not a little up from what I had projected with kindergarten. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six more registrations from the time of screening, although probably six to eight families have made alternative decisions. So I'm sort of at about the same place, probably at around 130. Thank you. Anything else on the business manager's report? Okay, Peter and Jennifer. Uh, well, there's not a lot to report right now. <laughs> School ends Friday, as you know. Um, exams are this week. They started today, and they'll run through Friday. And then after that, we'll be all finished. Um, the senior banquet is tomorrow night, though, and that's where all the scholarships and things like that for the seniors will be given. So they're looking forward to that. And then, of course, graduation is Friday at Fort Williams. So we're hoping for good weather for that. And the ceremonies there start at 4 o'clock. Um, the Spring Sports Award Assembly was held last Thursday, and that was a chance for all the varsity players and the coaches to be honored. It was quite a nice assembly. And tomorrow the SAC has their end-of-the-year picnic at Fort Williams. It's a new thing. It starts at 1 o'clock, and old members from this year and new members that were elected this year, including the 8th grade members, will have the opportunity to be oriented with the SAC. We'll talk about things that we want to do next year and the accomplishments we made this year. It should be a fun. I Thank just you. wanted to comment on the musical that was held um, last week or the week before. It was wonderful. Uh, the kids at the high school and, and the directors should be so proud of themselves for really doing a fine, fine job. And I know everybody that saw it just really enjoyed themselves. Thank you.
Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to, to note for the board that this is Peter Glasser's last meeting as a student representative to the school board. He uh, will not be representing the students next year in that capacity, although we will find some wonderful use for him. But both he and Jennifer have been, I think, distinguished representatives of the student body. And I'd just like to go on record as thanking them for their, for their efforts and particularly thanking Peter since we will not be seeing him in that capacity uh, next year. I just wanted that to be noted. Thank you. Well, I think that the board uh, can certainly heartily endorse that uh, unanimously. Uh, Dr. Pelletier. In the uh, first report, I'd like to report on the Coalition of Central Schools grant. Uh, we've received that grant, I'm very pleased to say. This is a $25,000 grant uh, from the United Parcel Service. This grant will be in two parts, 10,000 the first year and 15 the second year. Uh, this will be uh, used uh, to, for development activities, uh, workshops, for our teachers and conferences. Uh, this grant focuses on developing very clear student outcomes in courses and demonstrations, exhibitions, or performances which illustrate these outcomes. I'm extremely pleased uh, and excited, and this will all begin next fall. The second area, which always gives me great pleasure and it's one of our major goals, is to share with you the college choices. And uh, I'd like to say that uh, I would call this a banner year, and I would like to just uh, share with you a few statistics that indicate that. The class was successful in post-secondary education with more students being accepted to their first choice schools. Out of 123 students, 104 or 84 of the class, 84%, will be entering some form of post-secondary education. Students were admitted to over 150 different schools. Of these, 62 colleges are rated by the Peterson Guide as being selective colleges. Uh, Four-year schools, 96 students will go, which is 78% of the class. Uh, one and two year schools, nine students for 7%. 13% uh, or 16 will go to work and 2% for the military. Uh, four year colleges, 96 or 92%. One and two year schools, 8%. In state schools, 24%. 60 out of state, 47% for public schools, 53 private schools and 36% for selective colleges. I would just like to take this opportunity to compliment all of the seniors and the teachers who helped them for a banner year. Thank you. And thirdly, I'd like to add that uh, the Administrative, Administrative Council went back to uh, our last session and uh, settled on what we tried was a third Wednesday part day for workshops. Now there are a couple months where this didn't work out very well. Uh, the calendar will come out tomorrow and uh, we will ask the principals, and I'm pleased that they're here, to distribute the calendar to the students so that we can get them home. And those half days are listed in your package this evening. It's the square box. And Mr. Chairman, that's all I have for the superintendent's report. Thank you. The next report is mine, and it will be a fairly brief one. On May 22nd, we had a workshop on the career ladder, which was quite well attended. And we went over the, the history of the career ladder, and then we discussed some of its uh, advantages and some of its shortcomings. The result of that meeting uh, was that four members of the school board assisted, uh, were present at a meeting of the so-called core committee. And we spent quite a lot of time discussing how to move forward on the issue of the, the various issues which confront the career ladder. And the, the upshot was that we decided to form a, a committee which will begin work immediately which 
will consist of two members representing each of five constituencies, the school board itself, the administration, the teachers that are on the index, uh, teachers that are on the career ladder, and the Cape Elizabeth uh, Education Association. The appointments to that committee uh, on the school board are uh, Jan and Charlie, and we hope that uh, this committee, which is fairly small, will be able to address the, the issues of the uh, cost of the career ladder, the, the effect on uh, morale, the time that it takes to administer a, a program as complicated as this, and we will be reporting to you regularly uh, in the meetings uh, in the new year. I also would like to add one item to the uh, agenda, and that is appointments to the various committees. And those are the Negotiations Committee, which uh, uh, consists of Loretta and John. They will be negotiating with the, uh, the teachers. Our contract uh, expires at the end of uh, the next year. The a Committee of One, consisting of myself, will uh, negotiate with the administrators. Uh, I will also remain on the Athletic Committee, which is uh, probably the uh, committee that takes the least time. Uh, Charlie will, uh, as I mentioned earlier, will be on the Career Ladder Committee and also will be our legislative liaison and a member of the community team. Did I leave anybody out? Mr. Good. Chairman, we are, we're going to need an additional or two board members for the career ladder. Uh, no, I did that. I, I worked them into the career ladder workshop, and that's going to be uh, Jan and Charlie. Okay. Okay. So the next item on the agenda is uh, the second reading of the special education tutoring and the post secondary enrollment options. Uh, are there any comments from board members on those? Are there any comments from the public? Are there any comments from anybody? <laughs> Need a motion to, can we accept these together with one motion or do you want to? Good. Wait. The, both of them? The first and the second policy, are you saying? So special education tutoring and there's a post-secondary enrollment option. I want to talk about the post-secondary enrollment option. Oh, come on. I may, why don't I make a motion then for the, uh, we accept the special education tutoring policy. Well, your second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Okay, the next is the post-secondary enrollment options. I was reading over this this afternoon, and, and I see that it says that um, the student must attend a public post-secondary institution, and then you give an example such as the University of Maine or the Vocational Tech Institute, I, which I take that to be an example. But I'm wondering if somewhere down the line some year someone might decide they wanted to go to the University of Virginia or the University of North Carolina, and we're committed, it says, to be paying uh, their transportation, the cost of their books, and their course fees. Um, I, I'm just afraid that this does not, I, I mean, it, it appears humorous now, but someday someone may come and say, you have this policy, and it does not say that I cannot leave this state and go to another public institution, and, and uh, I don't think that's the spirit in which it was intended, and so I think somehow we need to, to limit this to a uh, a public institution in the Portland area. Well, doesn't it, uh, the, the first sentence ends, courses taken before high school graduation, I assume that means this high school, and that therefore the student is a student here. That's true. Um, it would be tough to get to North Carolina, you know, for a Russian course. Or well, I don't know, I'd still like clarification in there that somehow limits it to an area school. 
the and conceivably I, they could be given the assignments and working on their high school graduate graduation requirements at the same time they're attending a it's conceivable I mean you might as well have it very explicit because it could be a school in Boston it could be a UH right. I mean that's a one day you know two hours down hour for the course two hours back I can see your point however I think this is limited to, to uh, our state Board of Education which is uh, I suspect any public school in the state of Maine then I, should, I think it should be specified in the document a specific locality or a Limit, limits on the locality yes. uh, let me uh, Mr. Chairman let me take it back and uh, find out why this is a sample policy from the state why there are no limitations that's fine. I think it's uh, it can certainly wait until the next meeting. Certainly, we're not yeah. going to be using it. Okay. Actually, we are going to be using it, but but that's already worked out. Is yes. that correct? I mean, we do have a student that will be attending. And it's local, so we can. Uh, local. Uh, well, but I, I believe we'll have a school board meeting before school commences in the fall. All right. We will. Yeah. New business, Dr. Pelletier. Uh, this is approval to receive and expend all federal and state grants for fiscal year 1991. This is in line with uh, uh, the municipal acceptance of state funds, which is a uh, municipal law that was passed last year. And uh, from now on, each year we bring this. We're, we're unable to expend funds unless we get permission at this time from the board. So I would hope there'd be a motion to be able to accept funds throughout the year. Do I hear a motion? State and federal funds. I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? It's a vote. Consideration of resignations, leaves, and I believe you also have some new hires. Right. I would like to recommend that we accept the resignation of Elizabeth Kelsey as a French teacher in grades four, six, and eight, with regret, and also the resignation of Thor Nielsen in physical education, who will be sorely missed. Mr. Nielsen uh, was appointed last evening an assistant principal in South Portland, and I'd like to congratulate him, and we've enjoyed having him immensely. Okay, we'll miss him. And the same with Miss Kelsey, who's been a fine French teacher and her move to Massachusetts is certainly uh, uh, an advantage for Massachusetts and a great loss for Maine. I want to I want to agree with that wholeheartedly. She's just been outstanding and will really be missed. And truly just a further addition to that she came on the, the beginning of our foreign language program in, in the elementary school and so I hope that that she will be remembered as, as a uh, a pioneer in a, in a, in a program that, that got off to a wonderful start because of her and, and Miss Canal and others who also contributed. We'll miss her. All right, Mr. Chairman, I'd also like to <coughs> recommend a leave of absence without pay for Jerry Seal, our business education teacher at the high school who would like to spend uh, a year in industry as you know, his position, uh, as you will recall, was cut back from a full-time to a six-tenths position. Uh, I recommend the lead. I'm sorry, will we have to hire somebody now to replace him for the six-tenths? Yes, we will. Okay. Are we uh, going for specific? Do, do you need a motion on that? Yes, I do. Yeah. On both, right? I will, I will move to accept the resignations of Thor Nielsen and Elizabeth Kelsey. Second. Okay, all in favor? And I move that we grant uh, Mr. CO a one year leave of absence. Second. All in favor? All right, Mr. Chairman, uh, item 12 consideration of the superintendent's nominations for new teachers for the school year. I want to say that uh, we were able to start earlier this year. Uh, we've done, uh, I think, uh, we're ahead of ourselves. I think we have approximately uh, two or three <coughs> appointments to make, and I noticed that the special ed people were interviewing upstairs this evening. 
So uh, I'd like to <coughs> nominate the following people. Uh, grade four, Sandra Weiss. Grade uh, four, Michael Freilich. French teacher, Mary Ellen Tracy. High school librarian, Joyce Bell. High school mathematics, Pamela Rawson. High school chemistry, Patricia Monterio. High school and grade eight Spanish, Carice Pecor. Special education, Cindy Morton. French seven, Spanish four and six, Kathleen Riva. You will note there is a Vita uh, in your package on all of these people. Uh, we used our interviewing committees. Uh, in many cases, we had representation from the board. I'm extremely pleased with the quality and caliber of the people we're bringing on, and I would bring the remaining two or three, and hopefully no more, depending what happens in the summer, to you at our August meeting. Any questions? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Do I hear a second? second. Been moved and seconded. All in favor? Indeed. How many positions do we have now to fill? I, it's two or three. It went, things went well this evening. Uh, probably two. And what's the superior? Phys ed, special ed, and uh, grade. we're completely fourth grade. Grade four. Half time the music. music. Half time music. Yeah. Right. So that's. But they're, we're in the process of interviewing, except for the phys ed, I believe. Now that ends the business uh, part of our meeting. Uh, so I invite public comment on uh, any issue. Mr. Ferguson. of the board, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I was hoping to come here tonight with the silver lining that Chairman Leslie was looking for. In fact, I thought, as of 7 o'clock this morning, I had indeed found it. And based on some of the numbers that I had received from administration and based, my, based upon my understanding of those numbers, we never found 51,000. We found something like 89,000. We had a 4.30 meeting today with several of the members of the board and administration. And based upon the exchange at that meeting, the numbers were revised or information when relating to those numbers were changed to the extent that I don't feel comfortable offering my documentation tonight. I propose to take the chairman's recommendations, however, in moving ahead and in a couple of weeks or a few days, getting very accurate, precise numbers that we can utilize here and form, if not a committee, a team to agree on the numbers and see where we're heading. But some of the numbers I'm talking about, uh, it may seem a little bit strange. Let me try and explain it to you. In the, in the school budget, we're funding a six to $5,000 energy management system. An energy management system is very, very basically a computerized system, which not only saves energy, but helps to control your energy needs as best as it possibly can. So over the long term, you can save a lot of money with it. Uh, the school was fortunate enough to receive the promise of a federal matching grant to the sum of approximately $32,500, which would net out $32,500 as a budget item that the school would have to fund this year. My company is involved in energy management systems. We're not going to be involved in this one. It's, we're totally separate from it, believe me. But there are other approaches to funding it based on our experience from other school systems. One of the, the, the philosophies uh, that I use to, to explain it is uh, when you find people here, would I have a $32,000 house that I want you to have, and it's going to save $20,000 every year. It's going to appreciate by $20,000, and it's a real good deal, and I really want you to have it. But the problem is, you want to have it too, but you don't have $32,000 to spend. So, it's a mute issue. You can't raise that money. It's not in your budget. I come the next day and say, I really want you to have that house. I'm going to give it to you. And 
if you agree to take it, would you give me $10,000 a year? We'll, sh we'll share the savings. So basically what I'm proposing is that the school enter, instead of spending the $32,000, they go into a shared savings. Someone gives them the system, and they give half the savings back to that company who gives them the system. The net present value, the, the, the investment strategy and analysis of either buying it outright or going into shared savings is essentially the same. The, the amount of money accrued and, and the present worth of that money over a 10-year period is the same whether you buy it or someone gives it to you and you share the savings. The difference is the $32,500 in the budget that could be utilized this year. Should the board decide to spend it? And that's uh, where my discussions over the past three or four weeks have led. I'm saying if I can find this money and really document it's there, it, it might be that windfall that a lot of people are looking for. In addition to saving the cost of the system, there are other things this, this energy management system does. It, it saves energy, okay? And I had, one of the errors that I had apparently made was, uh, based on the numbers from the, the school's engineer, it's gonna save $21,000 a year energy. I hadn't found that anywhere in the budget. And I said, hey, that's a real number, it should be shown. But today, apparently we could say that, that those funds were used in fuel escalations and things like that. So the other things to be revisited, and there's information not really available for me to present a detailed report tonight. I think that's only a fair, okay? Yes, indeed. Thank you. Uh, and as you could tell, Mr. Ferguson and I have spent some time together on this issue, and uh, while uh, we and several others made a valiant effort to uh, uh, chase down all the numbers and all the different possibilities, uh, uh, we weren't uh, able to do that. We were able to agree on some things and agree that we disagreed on a few things, but the bottom line is that we need another uh, seven days or so to, to see if indeed there is uh, some additional savings. And this is an example of uh, people in the community, you know, stepping forward uh, uh, with particular knowledge that can be helpful in the budget process. and. Uh, uh, in this case, I certainly wish that uh, we were having this discussion in February or March rather than uh, on a beautiful evening in June when it's a bit late in the game. But we're going to, in the next uh, seven or so days, uh, talk about this some more and try to refine the possibilities. Yeah, this w just w one more point. Some of the variables we didn't agree on was because there's not enough inf information or conflicting information, and, and that, that can be resolved in a couple of weeks. There are some numbers that we do agree upon. Uh, the fact that the 32,000 doesn't have to be spent. So, so, and, and the value of that is the same. It's a case of what do you do with that money? Do you spend it on a program or do you stick in a CD or do you roll over the next year or do you forget about it? But there's also another issue is a central main power rebate. Based on discussions we had this morning and later this evening with what's called a, a power partner, which is companies who deal with uh, energy rebates with central main power, uh, there is up to $27,789 rebate, which can be documented avail available, which is in the form of cash from Central Main Power. So I think in a, in a week or so, or less than a week, I can document the fact that $32,500 is available. I can document the fact that $27,789 is available, assuming the engineer's numbers containing the reports I have are correct. And that's the only assumption I have to work on. I have no other numbers. That comes to, of course, the sixty thousand dollars in excess now of sixty thousand. Uh, let me point out then, for the for the benefit of uh, those who want to hear the other side of the story, that you and I have agreed to disagree on whether the thirty-two thousand five hundred is available, and uh, the rest of the board uh, is hearing this for the first time. So uh, uh, we're probably jumping the gun, but and I personally do not believe that if you invest thirty-two thousand dollars to have a return over 10 years of $20,000 a year that when you don't invest the $32,000 and then have a return of only $10,000 a year that you have found any money because both those income streams have the exact same net present value. Right. What the, the exact same net present value, what that really means if you're saving $21,000 every year, but in order to get that, you've got to spend $32,500. The value of those savings, after you spend the money today, is $96,536. If you don't spend the $32,000 out your own budget, and if someone gives you 
gives you the system and you say, gee, thank you, I'm going to give you half my savings. You're, you're losing $10,500 a year effectively, but you're also gaining $10,500 a year. If you take the fact that you didn't spend the 32000 and you've got the 10500 assuming this number's right, then you've got 97017 net present value. It's, it's the same, it's a wash, but not you do it. Okay. Well, we, we have sitting in the audience a noted uh, expert on the compound interest and annuity tables in Mr. Bremer, and uh, perhaps he would like to participate in this working group. Yeah. I, I'd like to, just to finish off, uh, I, I'm not an accountant, I'm not an economist, I'm a dumb engineer with Lotus 1, 2, 3 that does the net present values for me. So assuming all the numbers are the same, your Lotus has got to work as good as my Lotus. Uh, I, I, the reason I'm speaking here tonight is I've probably got better than 30, 30 hours of hard engineering time that I really don't have. This is a very, very busy period for me. But I'm devoting it to try to make money available for the funding of these $51,000 $51, worth, worth of cuts without being politically active, without really trying to say cancel this program in order to restore this program. This is my pet program. I'm saying, if it can be done, it's probably a very nice way for this community to start a little bit of restoration without anyone taking it in the mouth or anyone taking an undue hit. The numbers are not accurate enough for me based on this, af this afternoon's discussion, but they will be accurate in a week or so. My question to the board, and I would like you to answer, I'd like to know where we're coming from. If indeed I can come up with 51,000 or 60,000, which I can document, letters from utilities, letters from finance companies saying, you do this, we will do this. And if during the course of our workshop meetings, we do in fact pin down what the annual savings are going to be, and everyone agrees to those numbers, which reinforces these rebates. If I can document all that and give you this year close to the order of maybe 60,000, not including energy savings, not including maintenance cuts, not including any other items there may be issues at. This is pretty hard numbers. I could probably document first thing in the morning. If I can show you that, would you agree to reinstate those programs, the $51,000 of programs which were cut? Or am I spinning my wheels? It's, uh, it's tough to answer uh, that, that uh, question is partly in the... Um in the abstract, I think it would be far easier to answer if it were not a, uh, a theoretical, uh, hypothetical, rather, question. Uh, although I'd be willing to hear from, uh, you know, members of the board if they want to speak to this subject uh, at this time. My own personal preference is to wait seven days to see if uh, the town's uh, energy expert, who has been working on this uh, for many years, and the business manager and uh, um, Rich Mooney, a CPA, who you brought along to the meeting, who indicated that he would spend some time on it, and, and possibly Mr. Bremer. And if there were a written report, a consensus, mm -hmm. uh, available in seven days' time, which clearly demonstrated that type of saving over a protracted period of time, mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, it would be something that I personally would be willing to consider. But uh, having said that, and probably haven't spoken too much, let me turn the floor over to my colleagues. I first commend Mr. Ferguson for his efforts. And if he could show me in hard cash that, that funds could be saved, that I would strongly support re-implementing re those programs. I, I'd be happy to speak on that. I'm not looking for a short-term fix to anything. Um, if I, if I can be convinced that this is a fiscally responsible way of saving our school system money over the extended period of time, then I would support that also. I'm not looking for a short-term fix to get something in for one year because we, we're looking at a, a total picture of a long-term problem and long-term financial responsibility to this school system. I'd say I'd have to agree with Loretta Peter, and that is that, that we've been faced with a lot of short-term thinking lately, and I think what we've tried to do as we approach the budget this year and knowing what we're going to be facing in the next several years is to look at the long-term solutions, and I think that I need to be convinced that this is a long-term uh, savings to the school and not just a one-year quick fix. Yeah, if I may interject a little bit, my analysis done uh, based on the numbers that I had received from the administration. Uh, 
and by creative funding and, and by skinning up on maintenance cuts and things like that, that may, not, may or may not be doable, but it's all based on bids that I have solicited from people in the business. I understand it shows that the funding goes through to five years. At the end of four years, the money available on my original analysis wasn't a band-aid because I recognize that band-aid approaches are, are going to be more disruptive than anything. However, at its best, it could go in, ex in excess of four years if the numbers are correct. At its worst, it gives the kids another program for another year with essentially found money, and this is where Peter and I differ. It's found this year, it's not found next year, but it would give a one-year shortfall. And that's something you may want to consider too. But I thought it would be an acceptable thing. I'm trying to push, I, in the absence of the, the precise numbers that I need, precise line item items, the, the precise breakdown of different budgets, if I can get that information, then we can put it together and see how far out we can go. Based on the information, I went out in excess of four years with $51,000 without anyone losing any money. Well, just on stuff that, from my perspective, wasn't shown in the budget. But be happy to revisit that, as I said, with Peter and with anyone else who would be kind enough to assist me, both from the community and from the administration, and to see what we can do. But I don't want to create an elephant that's going nowhere. And, and come up with all this funding to create bad feeling uh, a week or a month down the road, and yet indeed we found fifty, sixty, eighty hundred, fifty, sixty, eighty thousand dollars, and the funds still aren't restored, and we've got another series of fighting. I don't think that's going to help anyone. That's why I'm asking the question: If I can find the money, if I can document it from utility letters and things like that, true documentation, will you re-implement the programs? Okay, Jan, we didn't hear from you. That's right. Um. <coughs> I, I thank you for all your work. I think that these are discussions that I would like to take up again when we start the budget process again. But I, I have to say, for me, the budget process this year is over. Well, what I hear is a, uh, is a uh, four members saying that if it is a um, a significant saving over a protracted period of time and not a Band-Aid that uh, that would be uh, considered. Is that a fair summation? Yes. Define pro protracted period. I want to know what window I have to work with here. Well, I think, as I said before, we've been, this community's <laughs> been through a lot lately. And I mean, every time we turn around, there's there's another, you know, idea that's out there that's been floated by somebody who means well and wants to wants to salvage a program or the series of programs that have been cut and I think it's unfortunate to continue this process much longer and I agree with Jan that there has to come a point in time when we said the budget's been approved the budget's been passed this is where it is and the rest of the world can get on with their lives I mean we have teachers we have programs people who are trying to you know uh, plan and project where they're going to be next year uh, and I don't think it's fair to them either uh, and I think that we have to set some sort of a deadline that says if we can't do something in five working days or whatever, or seven working days from today, then, uh, and agree on something, then I think we have to just say to the public, thank you, we appreciate it, you've pointed out some things that perhaps hadn't been pointed out before, but the process is over. I don't think any of us, if somebody were to walk in the door today, is going to say, um, gee, there's sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000, let us see what we can do with it, but I don't think I have enough information tonight to make that decision. Uh, Peter spent a lot more time on this. I'm not an engineer. Um, I have enough trouble getting the toast to, you know, just be the right color in the morning in the toaster oven. So I certainly don't have any idea of what we're trying to talk about here. Uh, but I think that uh, um, I commend you for your efforts. I think we have to put a timetable on when this can be done. We certainly can't drag this out all summer. Well, the timetable is going to be de determined by how quickly I can get precise information. Because I have found out at 4.30 tonight, I was working on information which was imprecise, which was furnished for the benefit of me putting this together. And I feel I've wasted over 30 engineering hours. Uh, I'm not blaming anyone for it. What I'm saying, we better start working now an awful lot closer. But if indeed, three weeks ago, there was $60,000 available to you, the utility letters backing it up, would you have made those cuts? Well, we have, we have, isn't our engineer in the room tonight, the person who put together yeah. the, program, the proposal for us? Did I see him walk in? Yeah. The gentleman who's, does he? Jack, are you out there? 
Jack, would you like to make a comment? I want to speak to this uh, subject for a couple of minutes. Uh, I looked out there a little while ago and didn't see you. Could you come forward and... Uh, Come on, Jack, have the microphone. <laughs> I think the only thing I could do is to uh, more or less go along with the idea of meeting again and working out these numbers a little bit more in a little more detail to find out you know, what savings are there and what savings are not there that are realizable for the school system. And right now, there's, there's really nothing I can address to what's been brought up tonight. Well, certainly not enough on which to base a decision. I agree with you. Um, is it the sense of the board that uh, you support the idea of uh, an additional uh, effort? Uh, you met today. Is it worth, do you think that, that uh, there's enough information out there for us to prolong this further? I frankly am, am somewhat skeptical for the reasons that uh, you know I alluded to earlier. Uh, Mr. Ferguson and I have a, a, uh, a fundamental difference about the $32,000 uh, in that I see it indeed as uh, a way to raise $32,000 uh, if one were going to take an extremely short term and uh, perhaps uh, expedient uh, view of the budget process. but. This board has tried so hard in this budget process to take a balanced view, and I don't mean a balanced budget, I mean a, uh, a budget that is balanced among uh, the priorities of our program, the priorities of our supervision of our program, and the maintenance of our physical plant. And we've just been through the experience of borrowing over a million dollars to play catch-up maintenance. Uh, we resisted the temptation to uh, make cuts in our curriculum program because two years ago that was the issue that uh, everybody in the community was concerned about. Certainly when <coughs> I ran for uh, election to uh, the school board, that was, uh, my recollection is that was the major issue. And we're halfway through that process. Sure, we could dump it. We could uh, uh, do the same with our uh, maintenance of our physical plant. but. We basically made the decision not to do that. We made the decision to take the long view. So far, I'm skeptical that there's $51,000 a year over a protracted period based on the numbers that I've heard. And I've spoken to Mr. LaBelle. I've spoken to Mr. Ferguson. And I've spoken to Mr. Zanecki. Zanecki. I knew that was wrong. The minute it came out of my mouth. That's twice to a day you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I did it with you on the phone this morning. Jack. Uh, so I, I uh, guess I'm uh, frankly skeptical, but I do accept uh, the fact that when I left you gentlemen this afternoon, you were still trying to figure out whether you could uh, get onto a, a Lotus 1-2-3 spreadsheet the precise numbers and the uh, moments in time when the, when the events uh, would take place and what the results would be with regard to CMP's rebate. Uh, I didn't see anything that, uh, that gave me the sense that there, were, that there were huge numbers there, not the type we're talking and certainly not over a uh, long period of time. But I'm willing to run down every lead and, uh, and uh, follow up uh, any citizen's idea. And I'm willing to devote a little time to it personally. But uh, I'm, I guess I'd rate it as somewhere in the vicinity of 50-50 or less, just to put a number on it. I guess I should add one more thing. The, the reason I came up with th this, this analysis, this rationale, this suggestion, is because a very large percentage of schools throughout New England are doing this very same thing. A very large percentage of corporations are doing it right now, including L.L. Bean, on, on shared savings, power partner programs, things like that, you know, and they're to be commanded because this is a way of reducing energy consumption, reducing pollution, and, and gaining in cash flow for no cash expenditure. The importance is to this school system, what's the value of getting $60,000 in the door this, this year? But it's $60,000 for one year. No. 
There's thirty two thousand dollars that you don't have to spend let me finish. That's the first year. There's thirty two thousand five hundred dollars that you don't have to spend this year that you, you have a check ready to stick in the mail right now. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's worth that, that's worth something. It is up to twenty seven thousand dollars. Central Main Power Rebate is not shown in a burning budget. That's found money, that's cash. That's sixty thousand dollars this year. The net present value income stream of the savings alone is $64,000 over the 10-year stream that you've been given for no expenditure. Yeah, no one being asked to do is accepted. Yeah, that, as you, yeah? As you hey, know, no. I want to make that clear. Uh, I really, you do agree? No, I do not. No, I don't agree. You don't agree? $32,500. I probably said that four times already. You don't agree? But, well, uh, I think, you know, I, th okay. I, I don't want to interrupt you, but I, th I think that we could probably debate this all night long and probably get nowhere. You spent a lot of time looking at this today. My feeling would be that, from my point of view, I would be willing to say, let's go till the end of next week and come up with an answer one way or the other so that we can put this issue to bed one way or the other. I think the town needs <coughs> that. I think this, this, the school needs that. Well, and what I'm does not, the town think that about for, that, John? I'm not doing that for expedient reasons. We could, we, could, we could have people come up, and I don't mean this in disrespect, we could have people come up three weeks from now saying, well, here's another way to save it. Here's another way to save more money, and we could be doing this all summer long. And I don't think that's fair to the people. I've been working on this for close to a month. With I meetings, telephone calls, fax messages going, I've, left, I've been working on information that is showing up in fax messages. Everyone knows the numbers. There's been no hidden agendas here. You don't put this package together in a couple of days. I understand that. So and five I'm days is not. And let the town people decide if, if five days is sufficient or not if it takes more than five days. I don't know when I'm going to get the information. I got this information at 4.30 this evening, which is contradictory to all the other, all the other information I had received that I made my report on. So I'm not awfully happy about that. I feel I've been spinning my wheels. I'm not blaming anyone. There was not enough communication. I'm saying let's establish that communication, look at the rule numbers, and see if it works or doesn't. Maybe it won't work. But I'm saying is I'm willing and other people are willing to put in the effort that if it does work, if it's reasonable, and we come up with some funds, will you put them towards those programs or not? That's all I'm asking you. Well, I think we reached the answer a little while ago, unless uh, people are changing their minds. Uh, uh, four of us feel that it is worth going forward an additional period, and I, I think John's suggestion of the end of next week, that's June 20. Uh, 9th, June 22nd. Uh, I should think that uh, you have, uh, you know, Mr. Rich uh, to assist you, and uh, there are five of us that were sitting in the room this afternoon that uh, ought to be able to get those numbers down on a piece of paper and see if indeed there are, uh, there are significant savings there. And uh, I think we just have to go through that process. There's been a lot of, because of the hurry and the late date, there's been a lot of rapid exchange of information. And obviously, we haven't all understood it the same way. Nor have we agreed, and I'll point it out for the fifth time, on the, con on the conceptual framework. Mm -hmm. But I'm willing to spend some more time talking to you about it. And I think uh, that's uh, probably uh, uh, where we should let it rest. But does the board agree with that? I agree with that as long as you're saying this is not a short-term fix, that this is a long-term responsible spending method for our school system. When and you get $10,500 a year I, I, and you don't spend anything like that, I, I, that's I responsible. I don't want to see it on paper. I, I don't, uh, well, show it on paper, you know. Me, so but basically, I, I don't that, want to just that, enter that, committees yeah. for the sake of entering committees okay. well, when it's a dead issue because I have more other valuable uses of my time. Yeah, I think what so we I want to get in, if, if we come up with it, is it something we can move with? Yeah. You see, I think that what we need now, and I think this is what Loretta's saying, we need to have a written report which uh, everybody's in agreement, or perhaps there are two different opinions, and then the superintendent would read that and he would make a recommendation you know, to the board. The that superintendent, would be the I'm sorry. way yeah. that we would uh, deal with this, although since I will be a member of the committee, I suppose that. That may be an unnecessary the, the, the step. That's where I have a problem, and I'm glad the superintendent's here because in the discussions this afternoon, and correct me, Darrell, if I'm wrong, you said if you had a windfall, if a bag of money fell through the roof and landed right on the table, you would not use that for these programs. You would stick it in the next year because you're going to be running severe shortages next year. 
Well, you said out this afternoon, I mean, uh, and if that's the case, then we are indeed spinning our wheels. That, that might be his recommendation, but that might not be the decision that we would make. Okay. I'm willing to work if I can get the information, and we'll give it our best effort. I'm not saying for sure, based on revised numbers, that we can happen, but we'll certainly try our best. Good. And I uh, look forward to your support. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bremer. I had uh, not planned to say anything tonight, and I'm, this will be very brief. I would be delighted, Peter, to serve in whatever capacity. Unfortunately, being an actuary specializing in health, annuity tables and in present value income streams are something that I've forgotten, you know, forgotten in the distant past. I would, I would love reminding an actuary of <laughs> that type of <laughs> feel for calculation. Well, I would be glad to it's serve the only in one any I capacity know. in this, if not for nothing else, to spread the heat among just a mere private citizen, at least who has been active you know, in trying to preserve programs. Um, I, you know, obviously many members of the board some weeks ago, at least informally, and I emphasize informally, agreed to consider restating, reinstating the programs if funding was available through the private fundraising effort, which uh, clearly the town council would rather we didn't go forward with. Although obviously there's no legal reason that we can't. I think it's fair to say that without rendering the town further asunder, we can stop that effort uh, or at least scale back or contemplate uh, where we're going to go from there. Obviously, this presents an avenue. I would be glad to serve in whatever capacity you would like to have me on, as, whether it's an observer, a participant, uh, or someone who can maybe make a Lotus spreadsheet work once in a while. Uh, I volunteer that, certainly having been picked out of the audience, I, how could I refuse? Thank you. Um, <laughs> okay. But please, uh, you know, I, I would be glad to uh, attend whatever meetings that I that I can or that you call me into on that. Um, it is fair, I think, that in some weeks back we had talked about a, a, the, the informal uh, fundraising effort that would maybe, we'd see where we were, you know, around June 23rd. And if we were there or very close, that allowed one consideration. If we were not, then obviously I would have had to agree that we go no further. I think the town, well, the townspeople deserve one more time at it, and that's part of the issue uh, I don't think many townspeople recognized the severity of the budget crisis that was coming upon us and probably weren't as active as we all should have been. I suspect that will not be the case I hope next not. year. I, for one, I'm sure I will be more active. Uh, the whole fundraising effort that we had talked about, that I had talked about and others, uh, was in fact a short-term fix to give us time to decide for, as a community what we wanted to do. Now there's, a long, there's two kinds of long-term solutions. One is the, the kind that John Holt envisions, and the other is the kind that, where I envision a different long-term solution where the children have the broad array of programs. I'm not sure that the townspeople are prepared, uh, I don't know, for one half of 1% of the school's budget to sacrifice home economics. I have, I'm happy to be wrong. I'm willing to accept the good along with the bad on that. Um, so to the extent that the June 22nd date is one consistent with at least our informal understanding you know, I, I hope that you all would stand with that and Scotty would be able to come up with some answers by then and I would be glad to serve in whatever capacity to assist that process. Good. Thank you. Any other public comment? I'm going to be quick. Yes, you spoke last night, didn't you? Right. You spoke last night? Yes, I, th that's why I'm here. First of all, it's been a long year. I don't want to talk about the budget. I can't even figure out my check-in account. I'm so confused. I want to thank the people that I did communicate with through the school year. Charlie, Jan, I spoke to Jan off and on. Loretta, I did have the opportunity to meet you. I didn't get the opportunity, but I plan on it next year. And the reason I'm up here is I went to the town board last night. And this isn't against anybody. I think it's all going to maybe help us and hopefully help you guys. It's going to be a tough year. The budget's going to get tighter next year. And I feel as though two new school board members added to the previous five we have would be a great help for all of us. You know, as a community, as parents, as extra hands for you, extra knowledge, extra putting out in the community and seeing how we feel, what we need, what the budget needs, what it doesn't need. And I just wanted you to be aware that I did go in front of the board, asked for that, spoke to Mr. McGovern today, and uh, 
I'm going forth with my petition. They're going to help me at town hall how to write it up because I don't have the full knowledge. And uh, as of Thursday, I'm done work for the summer, but I'm gonna go full force with my petition and I hope that you're all behind me. You've done a great job at what we could go with. I mean, it's not, we can't pinpoint, you know, it's, it's just one thing, it's money, you know? And, and I don't feel as though two school board members is gonna dampen our budget any. And, you know, they're there, it's there. They're willing to help. Whoever wants to help will run for it. I don't intend on running for it. I do intend on being a concerned parent with my input, whatever it is, but I, I do hope that you agree that two new members would be a great support to you and our school system. Thank you. Any other public comment? Then I would entertain, oh, Barbara? This is way out of order and I apologize. And I meant to call Daryl and ask this be included in the superintendent's report and I just plain didn't get to it. This is new information. And, it, and it's just a, a couple of pieces of good news. Um, some of our teachers uh, had the energy this spring to write for some innovative grants and we've just received news of some awards. And I'd like to share those with you. Um, and I have copies of one of them and not of the other and I'll get those to you when I can. Mary Jo Thompson decided and, and quick notice as she saw a, an award possible to write uh, one in collaboration with the Maine Historical Society to publish our third grade social studies curriculum around Portland Cape Elizabeth history. And it was granted. It wasn't fully funded and we're going to look at uh, the Maine Historical Society uh, addressing the need for a little bit of more funding. But this may be, this is in our opinion, such a high quality curriculum that we've pulled together over the past few years that to have it published is very exciting for us. And that was, that was funded. The other thing that was funded um, was an African American studies unit developed by two fourth grade teachers, Nancy St. John and Rachel Clark. They had pulled together a, an Afro-American study unit for the past few years, really looking to expand it, looking to partner with a community in Cambridge, Massachusetts for some real sharing opportunities back and forth with the community. And they received a grant totaling $4,500 based on the premise that they would develop and pilot the program this year and share it with the rest of the fourth grade and other uh, interested communities as the project develops. So I was really pleased for them. They're very excited. And I'd like to just give you some copies of that for your review. We'll take our congratulations back to them. Anybody else? Then I would entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss negotiations and a personnel matter. So moved. So second. All in favor? Um, are we setting a meeting? Oh. Do we have a date for the next meeting? Sorry. We're going to go whiz out of executive session here and Wasn't set a right date now. for the meeting. Are we going to set a date for the meeting? I don't see it on the agenda. We're not having a July meeting. There's no meeting, no okay. meeting in July and hopefully the third Tuesday in August. Third Tuesday. Which is August 21st. Yeah. Is it the third, third. Tuesday? Oh, I'd like it the third because the closer to the beginning of school I get most of the business done. That's the 21st, is that right? Is that my? Yep. Okay, let the record show that we went into executive session. Now we're in executive session. We went into executive session and came right out. I'm going back here. Yeah.